Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be looking at how to do some really quick and easy post-processing effects inside of Unreal. Now, if you're coming from a package like Touch Designer or Notch, you're probably familiar with having individual nodes to be able to throw in things like bloom filters, be able to do levels, contrast, control white and black levels, all of those kind of things are normal parts of our compositing chain. Now inside of Unreal, because we don't really have a compositing area and everything kind of happens inside of 3D, luckily we do have an actor we can throw into the scene that gives us access to a lot of these effects. Now this is gonna be really cool because it's quick, it's easy, and it gives you a ton of beautiful ways to crank up the quality of your final output. So now inside of this kind of template project that I have, I've got my Niagara system spewing out these particles, I've got a couple lights in the background, and I've got this floor that is a PBR material that's, that's given us a nice set of reflections on it. But as you can see, because everything is additive, you know, it's blown out everywhere, wherever there's kind of these particles, it doesn't really have a good feel of contrast to it. It's, it's just bright everywhere. So now if we were gonna get started with our post-processing effects, first thing I'm gonna do is go up to the top left in the place actors area, and I'm gonna look for a post-process volume. Now the interesting thing about this is it's not a layer that we just throw on the end. It is actually a volume that sits inside of the world and only cameras within that volume are gonna be affected by the different effects that we're gonna turn on. Now we're gonna see this if I drag and drop that from the place actors menu into the world. We have our volume there and you can go ahead inside of the actual details of that post-process volume. You can move it around, you can make it bigger or smaller. Now this is nice because you can have multiple cameras, each one with their own volume, getting a different set of effects. But I think for most people working on interactive and immersive projects, probably what you're gonna have is a single camera, a beautiful scene, and you wanna be able to just do some nice post-processing effects on that scene. For a lot of those folks, I recommend in the details panel of the post-process volume, we can look for something called Infinite Extend Unbound. And what that essentially does is it takes this volume and basically makes the edges of it stretch out to infinity. That means every camera in the scene is gonna be affected by these, and it just makes it a lot easier to manage, especially if you are going to have maybe a dynamic camera in the scene for, for virtual production type of things. So all we have to do is go ahead and turn this on, and that means all of the post-processing effects we're gonna apply now will be unrestricted by that volume and are gonna get applied to our camera here. So once I, I've gone ahead and done that, I can clear my search and we can start going from top to bottom through all of the different kinds of wonderful post-processing effects that we can get access to. Even starting from the top, you know, I already see some favorites of mine, bloom, exposure, chromatic aberration, lens flares, depth of fields, all of these things are really fantastic things that I highly recommend folks learn more about and apply to your final product because it's just gonna give it a lot more sheen and polish and really take it up that extra level at the end. So in this scene already, I can see, you know what, it, it's kind of looking a bit too bright. So maybe the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the exposure menu here and turn on my exposure compensation. Now I have a nice little slider that if I move it up or down, you can already see I'm much more in control of the overall level of this scene. I think that already looks so much better. We can actually see the detail of the particles inside of that Niagara system. You know, we spent time making random particles. We couldn't even see them before. So this is already a step in the right direction. Now you can see a lot of these effects have so many different parameters. You know, we can clamp the minimum maximum brightness. We can change how it's metering for exposure. Uh, we can give it different masks and curves to use. So what we're doing now is really just scratching the surface for quick victories inside of your project. So let's go ahead and say I like this kind of exposure level here, but what I wanna do is, is bring out a little bit more of the glow and highlights of those bright elements. Well, bloom is what that's for, and if you've never used a bloom filter before, it's, you've seen it, you just didn't know what it was because it's been on every probably video game in the last 10 years, every kind of VFX shot you've seen in a movie. And essentially what the bloom does is it goes through the texture, goes through your scene, and all the things that are bright, they get a little bit more bright and a little bit of blur added on top of them so that it, it kind of gives it that sense of like, oh, the bright things are glowing in the scene. It's a wonderful effect and you'll probably almost always want to have it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the intensity here 
And you can see as I start to turn this up, we get this nice kind of beautiful glow, a little bit more brighter around the, the lights and the reflections and the particles. And you can see if I turn this up to something like 20, it might add a little bit too much blur for my taste. So I'm gonna bring this back down to maybe five or eight even. And then if I wanted to turn this back up a little bit in brightness, I could easily go back down to my exposure settings and give it a tiny little bump up here. Great, so now we can keep going with some of the other effects that are really useful. So let me close up our bloom and our exposure here. Chromatic aberration is a really cool effect. It gives the edges of the scene that kind of realistic physical lens kind of funniness that happens. So you can see if I turn this up, we can see the color shifts happening kind of around the edges of our scene. You know, a lot of these may be preference. Some of them may be useful all the time. Chromatic aberration is probably one of those ones where you'll want to be more selective about. But then things like lens flares. I can turn on this lens flare and all of a sudden now you can see I have a dynamic lens flare as I move this camera around based on the lighting in my scene. I can turn it up or down based on how subtle I want it. I think even, ooh, that's a nice one. Just nice and subtle in there. Boom, just a click of a button. We can even close our lens flare and see things like depth of field where we can set our focal distances and all that good stuff. We'll leave that for another time. I think something a lot of people are going to want to do is play with the overall color levels. So if I go to the color grading section and I open up this global section, you can see for folks that maybe are more used to doing these kind of levels, you can get highlights, midtones, and shadows separately. But for a lot of folks, global might be all you need because you can go ahead turn on contrast and say, you know what? I just want to bump the contrast just a tiny bit. Just to bring out, look at that. Already, and you can see here, if we turn off this post-processing volume, actually, let's go ahead and delete it here. This is what we started with, just a really bland, overblown out scene. And just by adding our post-processing volume, got a nice contrast, we got our bloom in there, we can even control some of the saturation if we want to turn it just a tiny bit up. And you can even do some more creative effects if you didn't want to do just these kind of more, you know, professional features, let's say. So for example, there's some really nice ability to simulate film. So what we can do is maybe turn on the slope and then start to turn it down. So you get almost that old film kind of look in there, similar with the toe and the shoulder. These give you some kind of really nice artificial film type of effects. And then you can go down into the rendering features here. And these are all the really beautiful kind of advanced features that we know and love coming from Unreal. You know, we can turn on motion blurs. We can turn on ambient occlusions. We can turn on global illuminations. We really have a whole range of post-processing effects that we can add quickly and easily into your scene without much stress. And I hope that gets you a quick victory. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.